was looking at monster.com a while back to see like, what do people think about multitasking? Is this something that employers want? Should this be something that we're cultivating? And it's one of the most frequently cited characteristics that employers are looking for in employees. But we don't really like the feeling of multitasking for the most part. Not at all. No, I hate it. You know, there's a really cool study that was done with emergency room doctors. And this was, you know, a statistician analyzed how good are doctors, emergency room doctors, as multitasking increases for them. So what's really interesting about ER doctors, right, is that they have no idea what this shift is going to present. They could have one patient. They could have seven, eight patients that they're handling simultaneously. That's requiring that they multitask. And even within these patient loads, like there's times when they're waiting for results from another doctor or consultation or for lab work to come in and they have to kind of put that on pause and then switch to handling another patient case. That's another way that multitasking plays out. Like you get partway through something and then you have to pause and then you got to turn to something else and then you got to come back and, and there's costs to that, right? It's hard for our brain to like juggle or toggle between tabs, if you will. But what they found was that emergency room doctors actually were more efficient as their patient load increased. As it went from one to two, two to three, they were able to sort of, you know, uh, digest all the information that they were getting in at a faster clip. So the amount of time per patient was going down and they weren't making mistakes. They indexed that by looking at how frequently do the patients come back within a 24 hour period of time. If you come back within 24 hours, it probably means that you got misdiagnosed or you didn't get the right sort of treatment prescribed to you to get the job done. So what they found was that like increase in patient load actually helped increase the efficiency of the doctor's work, the, their ability to do their job well. But there was a tipping point between five and six patients and then, and then beyond, then the amount of time per patient increased and the number of patients that were coming back within a day also increased, suggesting that, you know, doctors now like we're slowing down as they're trying to toggle between all these open tabs and making mistakes, not necessarily fatal ones, right? But just like not doing their job as well. So it's kind of like a U shape, right? Multitasking is good. It can, it can, and what it does is sort of like act as a, a good form of stress. Some stress is good or engagement, right? It's like, okay, here's a challenge that I like to handle. These are people who chose to be emergency room doctors. So it's like an investment. It's almost, you know, increasing their motivation and a, and a challenge that they know they have the resources to take on and do, do well with. So that's why you see performance increasing with a small amount of multitasking, but there are limits to what we can handle cognitively. And then you see the drop off afterwards. So I think that's a great study for illustrating how multitasking is a tool. If we can self-diagnose, even if we're not emergency room doctors, is this something I have a lot of expertise in or is it something that's kind of new? Is it something that requires all different kinds of my brain parts to be operating together as one or not? Would I benefit from multitasking? Is it a, a form of stress, a good kind of stress that's going to get me engaged and get me excited about what it is that I'm doing? If you want to learn how to set goals that you can actually achieve and stay motivated to achieve them, you've got to hear the full conversation I had with Dr. Emily Belchettis. Click on the link right over there.